Homework 4.1 number 3 is another application of area under a curve, but this time instead of using a geometric formula, we're going to use rectangles to approximate the area. So a company that produces ribbon has found that the marginal cost of producing x yards of ribbon is given by the marginal cost function, where c prime of x is in cents. What we want is we want to approximate the total cost of manufacturing 800 yards of ribbon using five subintervals over the interval from 0 to 800 and use the left endpoints of the subinterval. So again, we want to approximate the total cost from the marginal cost, so we need to approximate the area under that curve, and this time using rectangles. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the graph again. I've already typed the function into y1, and again, the challenge is how to set the window so we get a nice view. Again, we can see that the x-axis must go from at least 0 to 800, but the question becomes, what should we set the y values to? And again, if we use our table and we press in x equals 0 and x equals 800, this will tell us that we have to go at least as high as 47 and as low as 2.2. But since we want to see the x-axis, we should set the y minimum to some negative value. So I chose x from 0 to 800, y from negative 5 to 50, and I take a look at this graph. Now again, notice the shape underneath the curve is not a trapezoid or a triangle, so therefore we're using rectangles to approximate the area. In this case, we'll use five rectangles. So we need to divide this up into five intervals and then use the left side of each subinterval to find the height of that rectangle. Let's go ahead and take a look at it on another slide. First thing we need to do is figure out how wide our intervals are going to be. Remember the formula is b minus a divided by n, a and b being the interval. So we have 800 minus 0 over five intervals or five rectangles and the result will be a width of 160. So we're going to divide this up into five equal intervals. And in order to determine the height of each rectangle, we're going to take the left side of the interval. So it would look like this. So the area of these five rectangles would be our approximate area under the curve. So to set this up, we know each interval is 160 units, and the height of each rectangle will be determined by the function values. So the area is approximately equal to, for this first rectangle, f of 0 would be the y value there, times the width of 160, plus the area of rectangle 2 would be, this y value here would be our height, so f of 160 times the width of 160, plus the area of rectangle 2, this is the height, this would be f of 160 plus 160, or f of 320, times the width of 160. Notice all the widths are 160, plus the area, sorry, this is a, a sub 3, plus the area of this fourth rectangle would be f of, well, we have 163 times, or f of 480 times 160, plus the last rectangle, this would be the height, this would be f of, Let's see, 480 was here, plus another 160, that would give us 640, or f of 640, times another width of 160. A couple things to notice here. Notice within the function notation, it increases by 160 each time. That's because the width of each interval is 160. And notice that the width of each rectangle stays constant. So to figure out these values, we can go back to our graphing calculator. I'm going to do it from the home screen. Because we have the function in y1, we can press vars, right over to y vars, press enter, select y1, and just use function notation from here. So y1 of 0 times 160 times 160 gives us 7,520 for the area of this first rectangle. The area of the next rectangle will be f of 160 times 160. Instead of selecting y1 each time, if I press second enter, I can just edit the previous entry. So I'll change this to y1 of 160 times 160. There's the area of the second rectangle. Press second enter again. Now I change y1 of 160 
to y1 of 320. There's the area of the third rectangle, and so on. The next will be y of 480 times 160. And the last one, f of 640 times 160. And now I need to add all five of those areas up. I've already done that. And it comes out to 24,902.4. However, this is in cents. And we want it in dollars, so we have to divide by 100, which gives us $249 and roughly two cents for the total cost. Now I want to show you one more thing. I posted this website in yesterday's announcement, and it's a very nice way to check our work. So let me go ahead and show this. What we can do is type in our function here, select our interval, which was from 0 to 800, select the number of partitions, which was 5. You notice how it already tells us the partition size. Next, we have to select which sum we want. And we took the left sum, and you can already see it draws the rectangles for us, and it also finds the area of these five rectangles. Now notice this E4 on the back. That means 2.49 times 10 to the fourth power. So to convert this to a decimal, we'd have to move the decimal place to the right four places. But again, remember that's in cents, and then convert that to dollars. It's a nice way to double check your work. And notice how it already adjusts the window for us, so it's a very nice tool. And again, if we wanted to use the right side, which we don't, but if we did, you can see that this is sometimes called the lower sum because it's less than the actual area. And again, in this case, this would be called the upper sum. What we're doing here is finding something called Riemann sums. I hope you found this helpful.